Hey guys, Kevin here to talk with you about one of my favorite commands of Jesus. This is the command to rejoice. This comes out of Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus is teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, and he's talking to the, his followers there, saying, Rejoice even in the midst of persecution. And our Lord commands us to be joyful in persecution. Not meaning kind of full of joy or partially full of joy, but completely full with joy. Now you might be looking at me like, how in the world is that going on? A lot of people looked at Jesus like he was kind of crazy. Just like you might be thinking, Kevin, you're a whack job. It's COVID, man. I'm so bored out of my mind. How in the world can I be full of joy? Well, church fam, this is important to understand that this joy goes deeper than our pain or our pleasure. This is not a fleeting emotion. This is hard and not even possible, you guys, for us to do it on our own. That is why Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit as our helper to be able to work through this struggle, to be able to work through the hard emotions because Jesus wasn't always going to be with each and every one of us being limited by his physical body, but instead he sent his spirit to indwell us as repentant Christ followers. And so we have to then look at our joy as being something beyond what our present circumstances are and look forward to our future salvation and that we have a sovereign God who looks out for us and our ultimate good, which is to be more Christ-like. That is the most important thing for us, man. Now, the fullness of joy only comes when we have a deep sense of the presence of God in our lives. So that's spending time with him, getting invested in relationship with him. That's being immersed in who he is and what he is constantly doing in and around us. John 15 creates this inseparably connected relationship of joy to obedience and love. Now we have to be in obedience to the Lord in showing our love to him in order to experience the fullness of his joy. Now, from a psychological perspective, one cannot experience joy to the fullest when we are fixated on our own security, our own pleasures, our own self-interest. We have to be fixated on God alone. That is the only adequate center of our life that we can be satisfied in. So I want you guys to take a minute, as long as you need, actually, and really figure out what are you centering yourselves on? How are you spending your time? What are you fixating on for your life? Are you an athlete? Are you a student? Are you a scholar? Are you a wallflower? Whatever it is that you're driving towards, intentionally or not, you're going in one direction. And you have to evaluate. That means you stop, step back and pause and reflect. God, where am I going? What's going on? And how am I being distracted from centering on you? When you find where your time is being spent, there you will find your answer for how your life is being directed. And if you're like me, church fam, then you need to stop and pray and say, Lord, help me to prioritize you more above anything else in my life. Because I get distracted. I've got kids. I've got projects. I've got injuries. I've got excuses galore. But all of that needs to be put on pause and looked at through the lens of how is my relationship with the Lord? How am I prioritizing Him? How am I rejoicing and remembering the future hope of heaven and salvation and redemption in all of eternity with my Lord and Savior? And I challenge you guys to evaluate and see, is your joy being found in the promises of God?